afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and welcome to another episode of ISTJ Info Dumping. This episode in particular was requested by Art of Self Mastery, who invited me to do a podcast with him, and that should be appearing on his YouTube channel within the next week or so. So hopefully you'll check him out if you want to hear what I had to say, which I had a lot of things to say, and he didn't mind, so that was much appreciated. He wanted to know how to develop introverted sensing when you're someone who doesn't have introverted sensing in your function stack. So that is going to be a huge undertaking, especially if you're an INTJ or INFJ watching this, because you guys have introverted feeling as your eighth and last function. So I like to call the eighth function the migraine function, because from my, from what I understand about Myers-Briggs, or whatever you want to call it, people have argued the shadow functions don't exist in Myers-Briggs. Okay, from what I understand in typology, the eighth function is the function that strains your brain the most when you try to use it. So when I try to think futuristically and have a detailed plan of uh, a possible sequence of events, it just ends up giving me a headache and it just makes me exhausted. And I just, I, I need a pick me up after that moment. I need something, something simple, something where I don't have to think as hard. And I think that in general is where INTJs and INFJs excel. They like to stretch their brain. They like to be able to think that every person that is strange to them is a challenge that can be overcome. They don't give up as easily as I do. So how do you develop introverted sensing? A function that is literally the opposite of introverted intuition? Well, for starters, let me explain what introverted sensing is, just in case you're new to this series. So introverted sensing is the dominant function in ISTJs and ISFJs. And it is a function that's used to recollect information in the past, but since any type is capable of remembering things, it's, well, for one, it's a clearer, more detail-oriented memory, but it's also organizing the memories into a specific order. I've heard it described as an iPod, and I think that's an adequate comparison, because you select the song, but then you might also arrange it via artist. You might arrange it via, I like this song better than another song. So people that make, say, top 10 lists, if, if you're a fan of BuzzFeed, that itself is a very great example of introverted sensing. They're taking these things that are familiar and categorizing them. So heavy introverted sensors, especially the ones with the sensing on top, are usually able to vividly recall just about anything. But then when it's in the top position, it leads to such a reliance on the familiar that the bottom function, extroverted intuition, freaks out because it doesn't like things to change. It likes to constantly be in that cycle of, this has worked for me in the past, so let's keep making it work. Let's make sure that this never ends because this was such a success before. So to develop it as an INTJ or an INFJ, or if you have it in any of the shadow function slots, a few pieces of advice that helped me develop it, because you can even have an undeveloped dominant function if you don't use it properly. Take, for example, an ESTJ that has anger management problems or one who jumps to conclusions without properly thinking through objective reality. One thing that might really help you is if you have a notebook and you use that notebook to jot things down in a specific order and organize them based on some kind of category. So for example, I don't know if you can see it very well on this camera, but I've written down the spirits in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and which character represents each spirit. Now I have a file on my computer that goes even more in depth than that. It lists every spirit with every character, stage, and music track, and then it organizes them in the order in which you could fight those spirits. So it sounds like useless information, but this can be applied to other things besides just trivial video game details. Maybe something happened to you in your past, but you're not particularly good at remembering the date. What you could do is you could... Oh, I don't have my calendar with me. What you can do is you can take your calendar and you can look at where a date for a significant event was. And then you can look at that 
and just repeat it over and over again in your head. Like, take me for example. My very first mission trip was July 4th, 2010. So, I don't know what day it is for you, but you could just go over and over again, July 4th, 2010, July 4th, 2010, July 4th, 2010, over and over and over again until it becomes the Groundhog Day effect where you can't do anything but remember it. But it's not enough to just remember something. I mean, yes, INTJs and INFJs have questionable memories at best, but again, any type is capable of remembering things. Now you have to organize the thought. So the next step would be to see the underlying pattern behind what you're remembering. And if it sounds a lot like introverted intuition, that's because it is. Introverted intuition likes to see patterns in concepts and ideas. Introverted sensing is all about selecting a pattern from sensory details. So let's say, for example, you're categorizing colors. So you would take, say, the color of this wall, which is, well, in this lighting, it's kind of hard to tell. It's like a bluish green. So then you would say, okay, blue as a color. It is also on certain cars. Cars can be blue. The sky, the sky is not technically a color, but it appears to be blue based on how the light rays are arranged. And then you start making more connections as to how that personally relates to you. Like what have you experienced? So instead of thinking about a hypothetical future, you want to think about a concrete example that actually happened. I drove a blue car. My current car is blue. I had a blue popsicle and got a blue tongue. Those are concrete examples that I'm sure you can at least remember a little bit. Like, you may not be able to remember the specifics, but you can probably recall a general time when that happened. So after you've gotten those kinds of patterns, taken something and repeated the concept over and over again, then the next step is to do something about it. So for example, take me. I like to eat Lucky Charms every single morning if I can. And if I don't, it's usually because we ran out. So the introverted sensor will make a way to constantly keep having Lucky Charms, even if that involves checking when it's about to run out and then going to the store and getting more. So the next step to developing introverted sensing is to find a routine that feels comfortable to you and stick to it. Don't just try it for a day or a week and then just give up because you're too tired. You have to stick to it like glue. And this is going to sound terrifying for you guys because your dominant function, again, I'm speaking to extroverted sensors in general, but especially to the eighth function ones, your dominant function is all about seeking novelty. And you always want to collect these new experiences and experience like this very developed future. You have to be willing to put all of that aside. You have to be willing to only create a future in which your personal sensory experiences are your driving force for everything. You have worn a white shirt. White is your favorite color. So that means you must constantly wear white shirts for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean you always wear white shirts. I think unhealthy ISTJs and ISFJs can get too much into a rut where they don't want to change at all. And I think that's super unhealthy. Like, if I had too much introverted sensing, then I would probably have a panic attack if I didn't have a chance to go to the grocery store and the Lucky Charms ran out. I'd have to be willing to have enough intuition where I could say, okay, I guess I'll just have toast this morning or I'll have a different kind of cereal. I don't like it, but I'll do it. So that's the mindset you have to approach here if you're going to develop your introverted sensing is, I don't like it, but I'm going to learn to like it. So just, you might not like repetition, but it might end up helping you in the long run. You might find a certain benefit to going on the same hiking trail constantly. You might be able to say, go on the same hiking trail and then try to envision, I don't know, that you're in the world of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and then try to think, where would I hide a Horcrux in this kind of environment? Or you could try to find new paths in a familiar place. 
So just to recap a lot of what I've been saying, because I imagine a lot of you are getting headaches just trying to keep track of all these sensory details. Uh, notebooks are a good place to start. Calendars. Um, the same kind of cereal every morning. Colors. Trying to find consistent patterns in familiar things. No hypotheticals. Don't be making up possibilities here. Only make up tangible possibilities where you talk, where you, you think about what it is that's familiar. Now here's the really hard part. Once you've mastered all of that and you still say, Paul, I still want to develop it more, then you have to constantly think about it. It has to completely occupy your brain space to the point where that becomes an adrenaline rush for you. You get dopamine for being enthralled in these sensory details. When you're going to sleep, you find this immense feeling of satisfaction when you're like, 1,496 spirits, booyah baby, let's see how many of these I can remember. When you talk about a familiar experience in your lifetime, you are thrilled to pieces at the opportunity to tell people what it was that you were wearing. And you are thrilled at mentioning that you had a cheeseburger for lunch. And you are thrilled that you met a girl with red hair. You are absolutely loving the sensory details and wishing to pieces that no one would dare ask you about the underlying themes or how did you feel. You are solely focused on what it was that you observed. So, you INFJs and INTJs like challenges. You like seeking novelty. I bet you've never been asked to challenge yourself this much before. So, if you can do this, then congratulations, you may have officially mistyped. <laughs> so, I'm going to pretend to be an introverted intuitive for a moment, and I am going to try to make a prediction as to how well you guys will be able to do this. I personally think at most you guys might last a month or two, but I don't see it being your way of life for the foreseeable future. I can see you guys wanting to find a way that it'll be less boring to you, and you'll probably also want to have an aspirin nearby as you're doing this. But then if you're an INTJ, you'd probably think about how that could not be so good on the on the budget if you keep having to buy aspirins over and over again. So maybe you'll learn coping mechanisms for how to deal with a headache. At least that's how I do it when I try to use introverted intuition. But I'd like to say that if, if it seems like this is just too overwhelming for you, and trying to jump into my world right away when you're used to using introverted intuition, if that seems like too daunting of a task, then keep in mind the, the famous saying, you can't run a marathon if you don't know how to run around the block. So if you need a starting point, then I would suggest developing your extroverted sensing first. If you're an ESFP or an ESTP, this is probably stupid easy because that's your top function. So if you happen to be one of those types watching this, then you already have an advantage because you are very aware of what's going on in the moment. You never miss a detail, but you're constantly seeking new sensory experiences because once the moment is over, then there's only the future and the past and you don't like dwelling on that. So maybe keep a record of the sensory experiences you've experienced. Like, write down every roller coaster you've ever been on. Write down the food you like and dislike. And then try to contrast how familiar was this. For those of you that have sensing much lower, especially in the 7th and 8th functions, if you want to develop your extroverted sensing more first, then I would recommend, one, making sure that your eyes are checked. Make sure that if you don't wear glasses, that you don't need glasses. And if you do wear glasses, that you have an updated prescription. And then try to just look at things around you. Try to see how many different things you can observe within your actual eyesight. Like, don't try to look for hidden vibes. Don't try to look for patterns and connections. Look for stuff that's tangible. So for example, in my current line of sight, I see a wall. 
I see my guitar case, my air filter, my Gamefly envelope that I'm saving for the sake of a game lock. It's complicated. There's the box of bandages. There's my headphones for my Switch. There's my noise-canceling headphones, my notebook wallet, uh, my 3DS phone, the plug that leads into the webcam, the webcam itself. There's my Switch. There's my clock. This is going to go on forever, guys. So I'm, I'm going to stop myself here. But like legitimately try to practice seeing things and especially if you're if you if you know how to drive that is probably the biggest avenue where having good eyesight is going to really be beneficial because if you go past a stop sign or a red light you're probably going to get a ticket or at the very least you'll have a guilty conscience because a cop just happened to not be in the area so if you're good at driving and you're good at observing that, then start observing wherever else you go. Try to put yourself into an experience of, okay, I am going to pretend that I am in a car right now, and I'm going to pretend that I'm constantly checking my blind spots, and I'm adjusting my mirrors, and I've got the rear view m window all in place, and so I'm going to constantly observe everything around me. And then make a mental image in your head of where it was in 3D space that you remembered the object. So for me, for example, I don't need to move my head over there just to say, that's where I hang up my coat. I already know it because I've memorized its position in 3D space. So if I were to hypothetically take off my headphones right now and close my eyes, I could walk over to my coat no problem because I remember where it is. Now try to do that with everything. And then you've developed your extroverted sensing. So from there, once you're good at that, then you're capable of developing introverted sensing. But hey, I might be just totally off my rocker, and I might be presenting an impossible challenge. I might be causing you guys to do something that is biologically impossible. I might be doing something akin to asking someone to urinate out of their mouth. It might be something that is legitimately impossible to do but if you can do it if you really want to experience the world of an ISTJ and an ISFJ it would probably involve not being an INTJ or INFJ anymore you would have to like lose a part of yourself because you're trying so hard to be the opposite of what you are and we introverted feelers we like authenticity we like people to be who they really are. So if my challenge comes at the expense of you guys showing us your authentic self, if you're an INTJ, it's probably a little bit easier because you have introverted feeling. But if you INFJs um, feel like it's, how would I word it with introverted thinking? If you feel as though the system is too convoluted for you, then don't do it. At the very least, I think it's realistic to say that if you cannot jump into the world of introverted sensing and completely embrace what it's like to be in the dominant function, then at the very least, I think you guys can do memory building exercises. Because any type is capable of having a good memory. Any type is capable of remembering things. It's just that different types remember things with different priorities. The INFJs, for example, they can remember a past moment, they're just not going to constantly recollect it with every passing memory. And they're also going to focus on what did they feel in the moment? What was the overall vibe that they were getting? So maybe if you can just take one memory in your life and then try to remember every single sensory detail possible or wait for a future event and then make a mental note to yourself that during this event, while it's happening, you're going to keep track in your head, if, if that's too much of a stretch, you can just bring a notebook with you and just write down every single sensory detail. Like, the grass was green, it was raining, the couch was comfortable. And then once you do that, then you're on the better track of trying to remember. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section if this seems like a Herculean task or if you think it's easy peasy or if you think I'm just... I'm just stupid. But hey, at the end of the day, this was a request from an INTJ, the types that are the worst at using introverted sensing. So 
You guys can't say that I'm trying to torture you. You can say that one of my subscribers asked me to torture you. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching. I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and you want to hear about the amazing times I had on mission trip? Bye!